If you don't know that, you're probably way too young. Because, I mean, how do you not know? Let's get it on. What it is, what it ain't, it's your girl Ombre Alert, and I am back with another video. Excuse the mirrors in the back. I just haven't had any time to kind of like fix this whole area, so I hope this is okay for this video. Yeah. <laughs> So today we're going to get into Marvin Gaye, as you guys can see by the title. Y'all already knew that this was coming after Tammy Terrell. Uh, I did do a poll. I'll put it right here for the next videos. I'll start doing that more often so you guys can anticipate what you're going to see on my channel. I'll start doing a poll uh, weekly of topics that I'll be talking about. And I'm going to need your honest feedback. And I'm going to need you guys to participate in those polls so I know what order you guys would like me to record these videos in coming up soon. So make sure that you're into the polls and make sure you guys watch out for my vlog channel. It's called Vlogs My Ombre. Um, it's still kind of under destruction. Did I say destruction? Construction right now. Um, but I will let you guys know when... I post a video on there as well, and I'll leave the link on my community. So make sure you guys are subscribed so you know when I'm going to post and when I'm going to put those polls up for you guys to engage with me on my community. Okay, so now that we got that out the way, we're going to get right into the video. Y'all already know what to do. Like, comment, and subscribe. It's going down. Okay, Marvin Gaye especially is special to me because he's from Washington, D.C., like I am. He's a native to D.C. His contribution to D.C. musically is very important and, and special. I mean, not even just, like, his music, but the way that he dressed is, like, a classic, you know, version of an uptown D.C. guy. Someone that you really want to marry is Marvin Gaye. You know what I'm saying? He has the aesthetic. He's... He has the swag, he has the seduction, he has the music. So um, he was definitely a positive representation of a black man from Washington, D.C. So we're going to get right into it, okay? He was born April the 1st, 1939 at Howard University Hospital. I was also born at Howard University Hospital. Shout out to Howard. It's not the best. They could do better. They need to do better, okay? Everything that has Howard in it, first of all, they need to do better, okay? Um, but shout out to Howard University Hospital. His parents were Alberta Gay and Marvin Gay Sr. His father was an active reverend in a church, so he was very strict. Um, Marvin Gay learned to play the piano and the drums at a very young age which led to his love for R&B. So after he developed his skill in the piano and the drums, he ended up being in a music group called the Moon, the New Moon Glows. And um, he stood out in the group vocally, was able to get the attention of Barry Gordy. And soon he would sign to Motown. So all of this happened you know, gradually, he crafted his gifts of being a musician. And, you know, my definition of being a musician is being able to sing and also being able to play the instruments. And a lot of, you know, people nowadays, they don't have that. They don't have that luxury of being able to, you know, understand and play instruments there's not a lot of musicians nowadays, so that's definitely a great thing. So he definitely signed to Motown, and before he started to record actual songs for Motown, he was playing the drums for the Supremes and for Stevie Wonder during his early years. His first hit was Hitchhike in 1962. And then as the 60s started to progress, he started working with Tammy Terrell. And y'all know that because I talked about her in my last video. If you didn't see that, make sure you go check it out. But Tammy Terrell was very active in the 60s in Marvin Gaye's career. They definitely had like a songstress, songster duo. And they always sang together. 
some of their hits are Ain't No Mountain High Enough, If I Could Build My Whole World Around You, to name a few, okay? And they had a very close musical relationship, all right? The 70s is where Marvin Gaye started to have most of his success. So as the 60s came to a close, he was working, like I said, with Tammy Terrell. And then Tammy Terrell met her unfortunate death from a brain tumor in 1970. And a lot of people said that he was never the same after that. And he started to dive into drug abuse, unfortunately, because of the pain and the grief of losing a dear friend of his. He was one of the only ones allowed to come to her funeral, as I discussed in the last video, which is really telling. And I told you guys a little bit in the last video that I will be diving a little bit into Motown, okay? Because it's some things I need to, I need to just check for understanding, okay? But anyways, he was the only member from Motown actually able to come to her funeral because of their close-knit relationship, he did suffer from substance abuse in and out of the 70s, um, in the midst of a lot of his success. In the 70s, not only did he reach his critical acclaim, but it was a lot of going on in America in the 70s. It was the Vietnam War was going on, and people were choosing sides, and, you know, it was a lot of um, young men getting drafted into the war, and a lot of black men specifically. One of those black men, Muhammad Ali, he did not want to go, okay? He was like, them, you know, the Viet Cong, they ain't do nothing to me. You know, I'm getting treated unfairly in my own native land where I'm from, so why would I go over there and blow their their village up it makes no sense we're dealing with things in america that is in we're dealing with being treated unfairly in america so why would we go somewhere else and and destroy their village and destroy what they've built so a lot of that was going on a lot of you know deciding of which side of the war you want that led to marvin Gaye's song what's going on and it's definitely one of my favorite songs of his because it's so conscious it's um it's a very observant song you can just look around and i mean literally what's going on is like something that like everybody should be thinking every day but specifically black people we have this view of life that is really hard and it's hard for us to not be in that mindset of what's going on because we see crime up close and personal we see death up closer and personal. We just see it all, like, because we live in poverty and we live in the struggle and we're from the struggle. So it's like, we just see it, we live it, and we breathe it every day. It's, it's definitely a song that will withstand time because it's, it's true. Even now in DC, there's a lot of crime. There's a lot of violence. And that song speaks to that. And um, I just love that he's from D.C. because it just makes the song even more strong because of how much violence it is in the city. And during that time, it hasn't changed up until now. So he came out with that song and wanted to release that album. And Motown did not want him to release that. That's that's something that's... You know what I'm saying? No, I guess they just didn't want him to stir the pot in some kind of way. But the pot's already stirring. It's already boiling over. So he's only just talking about what he sees. If I see a pot on the stove and it's boiling over, then I'm going to I'm gonna try to do something to stop that or make everybody else aware. If you can't stop anything from happening, the best thing you can do is make people aware of what's going on. So that album did eventually get released and was a classic. After he saw that it was a lot of like tug and pull with him trying to release this album, he definitely wanted to just do things on his own and be more creative on his own because he sees, wow, my label, a black successful label doesn't even want to back me talking about black issues, like something, something's wrong here. He started to want to do things on his own. So in 1972, after he met, he married his second wife, cause he was married to um, Barry Gordy's sister, Anna Gordy. And she was old. 
Um, if I'm being honest, she was older, much older than him. And um, they had they had a relationship, you know. He he um, I'm I'm assuming that he loved her in some kind of way, but she was much older than him, and she could probably help him in ways that he wanted and needed at the time. And you know, I mean. <clears throat> And they couldn't have children, so I think that that's something that eventually broke them up. But it's said that he had had a baby with his niece in order for... I don't even want to get into all of that because it just sounds the same. But it's true. Like, he had a baby with his niece, and um, that was Marvin Gaye Jr. So... And they adopted him into, you know... That's crazy. Anyways, after he married his second wife, Janet Hunter, he made Let's Get It On. And that, <laughs> we all know. We all know that song. We all know that song. Like, you know, that's just one of those older songs that you know. If you don't know that, you're probably way too young. Because, I mean, how do you not know Let's Get It On? Anyways. After that, Motown pressed him to do tours. He didn't want to, but he did it anyway. And I think this led to a lot of his stress because he was just torn, torn, torn. He was still dealing with the grief of Tammy Terrell. He was on his second marriage, so there was a lot of pressure there. Um, just life, you know, was happening. Wouldn't release his next album until 1976, I think. You know, because of all the drug use and the stress and and the marriage and everything that was going on, I think he just, you know, he was just touring until 1976. And then he got to give it up was one of his songs that he made off of an album that he released. And then his last album was Here, My Dear in, in 1978. And this was, I saw like a creator on TikTok talk about this. But this was apparently a shady album um, because he was trying to get out of Motown. He had to release another album for them. So he actually released a shady album towards his ex-wife. And um, the album cover was like crazy. Like it was like a Monopoly board. And he had his side and she had her side. And hers was like cars and stuff. And and money and stuff and then his side was just piano and music so it was shady it was shady and in 1982 he signed to cbs records and that led to sexual healing so if you don't know let's get it on if you don't know sexual healing you're too young i'm sorry you're too young hang it up he continued to struggle with drug abuse in the 80s and then he moved in with his parents and his parents often had domestic fights and a lot of arguments which uh, apparently uh, mimicked his childhood in a bad way he got involved in an argument that happened in his house at their house and he was shot and killed by his father and his father claimed self-defense. But after the trial, he was convicted of involuntary manslaughter and was sentenced to prison. Um, I, I thought that this was a really sad end because this is something that is classic for DC is that there's a lot of domestic violence in DC. There's a lot of... Um, men killing their, you know, um, men killing their girlfriends or the mother of their children or, you know, women getting beat up by the father of their children and then killing him or there's just a lot of that going on in the city, a lot of violence um, relationship-wise, a lot of toxic relationship situations. Um, so, yeah. It's just a lot going on. Um, it's still to this day, like, really, really bad. Like, really, really bad. So, yeah, he did get killed by his own father, which is a horrible demise. 
um, to to come to after gaining so much success. And he literally passed away, like, I want to say 14 years after Tammy Terrell. So that's really sad because I know that's not what she wanted for him. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. I, I would definitely say, like, there is a common denominator with reaching a level of success and coming back home I really feel like you shouldn't come back home like I know it's it just it's something about it it's like people like that live with you or I don't know it's just like it don't even have to be like that it just it could just be people from your city that know who you've become they just hate on you they hate on you and they want to bring you down a level because they didn't work hard enough in their life to fix their situation. So it's just people just really don't know how to deal with their own life and they don't know how to overcome certain things. So they just hate so much that they really will take you out. So, I mean, we know that in other situations, like with Nipsey and specifically, like, it's just like hate is a real thing. And, um, I know it's sad because you want to give back, like, to your city, to you, where you're from. And you want to come back and see your parents. You know what I'm saying? But you don't want to have to deal with the things that you already have overcome in your childhood. So, unfortunately, Marvin Gaye passed away. Then we heard Marvin Gaye's name come back up in 2013 with the whole Blurred Lines fiasco with Robin Thicke and Pharrell Williams. That was crazy. I actually liked that song, but when I did hear it, I was like, wait a minute, something's not right. Because, I mean, that song was everywhere. That summer, I think it came out, like, in the summertime. And it was just everywhere. You could not pass a, a, a cookout in D.C. without hearing that song. Like, that song was everywhere, on the radio, everywhere. Um, it's just unfortunate that they didn't get any copyright from it. Because you can't, you can't steal. Like, you can't steal. I don't think that it was intentional what they did. Um, but it still wasn't done properly. So The family was awarded $7.3 million in that lawsuit against that song. And I'm sure it was easy to slice it up because they made so much money off of it. It's like, all right. I just, I don't know. I just, because I think it's because his family member, like one of his family members actually, if it goes to the kids, like, okay, cool. But like them adults, like it's something wrong with them and his family. But that's just my personal opinion. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching this video. Y'all already know it's Aubrey Alert. Stay tuned for more content. Make sure you guys like this video. Comment down below your thoughts. What did you think about this video? Let me know so we can discuss it and talk about it. It's ombre alert, okay? Okay. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.